Okay, complex numbers, 1.1.7 lesson. All right, real quick warm-up. Uh, we've got some radicals for you here. Number one and number two should look relatively easy to deal with. Uh, the square root of four would just be two. Four is a perfect square. Uh, 18, not a perfect square, but we can still break it down because 18 has uh, perfect square factors, nine. So we broke that down as the nine times two and then took the square root of nine, and that was three. And we could rewrite that as a three times the square root of two. But then you look at number three, and number three, nine looks nice because I know the square root of nine, but I don't know about this negative. So far in the real number system, we have had no idea how to find the square root of a negative number because there's been no number that when I multiply it by itself, can it give me back a negative number. But under a larger number system called the complex number system, which is bigger than the real number system, it's every real number plus all of these square roots of negative numbers, they do give us the opportunity to find the square root of a negative number, and that's using this new number that represents the square root of negative 1, i. So I broke this down into 9 times the negative 1, the one that made it negative, and I took the square root of the number that I did know, and that was 3, and I left the negative 1 underneath there, and again, we said that we're going to define i as the square root of negative 1. So whenever you see that i, you're thinking the square root of negative 1. If you would like to pause your computer screen real quick and write down the definitions for what is I, standard form, and the real part and imaginary part, that's just fine. Um, if you take a look, the standard form is AX plus BI. A and B represent coefficients, real coefficients. X is the variable, and I is the imaginary number, the square root of negative 1. The real part is AX, it doesn't have an I, so this is the real part. And then the imaginary part, or complex part, is BI because of that I piece. All right, we're going to uh, take a note of some patterns here. I've already got this filled in, so again, if you want to pause your computer screen and write that in, that's just fine. But what I've got worked out over here to the right is how, is basically the proof for where this pattern came from. So over here, I've written out why I squared ends up being negative 1. When you multiply the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, we multiply what's underneath the radical, negative 1 times, or sorry, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. It ends up being negative 1 as the two radicals cancel each other out. Uh, then i to the third is i squared times i to the first. Well, i squared is just negative 1, and i is i, so negative 1 times i gives us negative i i to the fourth is i to the third times i to the first so that's negative i times i or negative i squared where we would end up getting negative times negative one which would be just positive one and this pattern holds true for the second column i to the fifth i to the sixth i to the seventh i to the eighth some operations first adding and subtracting with complex numbers you just like when we were um, uh, simplifying polynomial expressions you have to combine like terms so things with I are like terms things without I can be like terms but you have to have the same amount of I's as far as like I square I to the third I to the fourth to be able to treat them as like terms so here 7 and negative 3 I are not like terms so we can't subtract those but 7 and 4, however, are like terms. So we could do 7 plus 4, and that gives me 11. And I'm going to cross those out since I've already combined those. And now I've got a negative 3i and a positive 5i. Since they have the same i, they're like terms. So negative 3 plus 5 will be positive 2i. Now I double check that I've got all like terms combined, and I've got it in standard form. I do, so I can circle it and move on. Okay, I'm going to try uh, a little bit more complicated example like number three here where we have to deal with this negative. Like we've done in previous videos, we're going to distribute this negative first so that we don't forget it. So three minus two i minus six minus i when I distribute that negative to each piece. And now I go to combine like terms. Three and a negative six is going to give me negative three negative 2i and a negative 1i is a negative 3i. No more like terms. Standard form is in place. There we go. Next, I'm looking 
for some examples with multiplying. Now, what's incredibly important about multiplying is that you realize that like terms are not required anymore, but the same multiplication terms um, stay, stay in place because we want to make sure that when we multiply, we're also taking into account um, exponents. So we've got to be aware of that. So our patterns up here with I squared will come in play. All right, so let's just try out example number one real quick. Now, we've got a binomial times a binomial. That means that we're going to have to either double distribute or do FOIL. So I'll just run through that with you real quick. Um, again, double distribute means everybody in here gets multiplied by everybody in the second set of parentheses. So 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times negative i is negative 2i. All right, then I work to my next set, 3i times 5i. 3i times 5 is positive 15i, and 3i times negative i is negative 3i squared. So again, we have to see that i squared and maybe think back to our patterns that we had earlier, and we'll do that in a second. Looking to combine like terms here, because both of these are i, so that's going to be 10 plus 13i minus 3i squared. Now, if you remember, i squared is actually a nice number. It's negative 1. So what that'll end up doing is that'll end up changing this negative 3 times negative 1 into a positive 3. I'm going to just write that out for you real quick so you don't get confused. So I just replaced i squared with negative 1. I showed you earlier how to get that. And now I'll just simplify negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. So 10 and positive 3 ends up being 13. And then I just keep the complex portion 13i. So this would be my simplest form of my complex number. All right, something that looks a little bit more complicated, maybe down here with 6. I've got an i on the outside as well as two binomials. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and distribute this i in here and then FOIL or double distribute. So I'm going to distribute that i and I'm going to get, let's move it up a little bit here, uh, I'm going to get 4i minus 2i squared and that's going to be a binomial and then I still have my 2 plus 3i that I'm going to have to distribute here in a second because of the multiplication that's taking place here. All right, this i squared is negative 1, so negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2. So I could just rewrite this like that. And now things seem to be a little bit less complicated. I could double distribute. 4i times 2 is 8i. 4i times 3i is positive 12i squared. All right. 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3i is 6i. Now, this i squared, that's going to become a negative 1, so I'm going to rewrite that as negative 12. And I can combine like terms with these i's here and here. So 8i and 6i makes 14i, and I'll bring down that 4. So now I just need to combine like terms with the negative 12 and the 4. So that gives me a negative 8 plus 14i as my simplified standard form version of my complex number.